Uh, and good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks very much for, for coming along. Uh, it's great to see you um, at these sessions, as always. Um, we've got a session today which incorporates two um, uh, great examples uh, from colleges working with industry um, to develop uh, the MetaSkills uh, 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 agenda. We have the first from Fort Valley College and uh, in conjunction with Morrison's Construction, uh, which uh, looks at a virtual workplace experience and placement for uh, learners who are on the Foundation Apprenticeship uh, Programme. Um, and we have a number of uh, uh, presenters who are going to assist in the del delivery of that. And then secondly, we have another example from uh, West College Scotland, uh, from Paul Fagan, and it's about the partnership that the college has with Fort Valley, with Perth College, uh, and other partners, such as the Nan National Manufacturing Institute, to develop meta skills in an engineering context. So without further ado, um, I will hand over to Aisha Craig from Fort Valley College and her colleagues to present on the virtual work experience. Hi there, thanks everyone for coming along today and listening to us. Uh, my name is Aisha Craig and I work at Fort Valley College as a Foundation Friendship Workplace Coordinator. Um, today we're going to go uh, have several people discussing the Morrison's Construction uh, virtual placement. Um, we've got Connor Gray from Morrison's Construction, um, we've got Graham Williamson um, from Fort Valley College, um, and then we have Lawrence Ferguson and then Jim from the Digital and Skills Learning team. Um, okay. So from there, there's just a couple of slides here. I'm happy to share this as well, really about what the booklet looks like. But without further ado, and I'm not going to go into too much longer, I'm going to pass you over to Connor. On you go, Connor. Hi, everyone. Yep. Thanks, uh, thanks Aisha. Um, yep, my name is Connor. I'm the Communities and Social Impact Assistant Manager for Morrison Construction. Um, as, you, as you all know, the world for construction kind of changed in the um, middle of last year. We all came back from being on furlough um, and community engagement team in particular, everything had kind of changed. Um, work placements used to be so, you know, practical on site, let's get them out and, you know, hands on and really try and teach them all these skills that they need to learn if they want to come into industry. Um, as a quick response, we really need to, to, to change um, and, and to go virtual. Um, we didn't want to just sit back and say, you know, can't do work placements on site anymore, so we know we're not doing it. Um, that's not the way we. That's not the way we like to work. So we came up with that. We came up with a solution that, at the time, kind of to us felt like it would just be uh, for that for that period of time until we go back to normal. That's how that was how that would be used. Um, it's had so so much traction that going forward, I actually think that we'll, we'll continue to use it. Um, it will be a stepping stone to whether people actually are interested in a particular part of the industry. Um, and we can use it before we use uh, before we put people into these these practical placements. And um, so yeah, we made it last. We made it sort of last August. I think we finalised it, um, and we used all of our kind of in-house um, job roles. So we used job roles such as site managers, design managers, quantity surveyors, all these kind of people. Um, and we created days um, within sort of it'd be a life in the day of a design manager or the life in the day of a life in the day of a site manager or something like that. Um, and we had tasks that the young people could go through and we would have a live session within a Microsoft Teams call um, with these individuals so that they could get a, a worthwhile and, and meaningful um, feedback, if you like. Um, whether It's not just a booklet, it's not just give them that and let them go for the week. It's a case of we'll actually have some interaction with them, we'll actually talk to them about um, what it's actually like being in the industry. Um, and like I say, it got so much traction, it worked really, really well across the whole central belt. Um, that we, we we started to kind of develop it and uh, create a wider range. So we've actually introduced um, trade days such as joinery and bricklaying um, and civil engineering. Um, and we've went to our supply chain and we've actually got our subcontractors um, to, to kind of come into this and create these days for us, create videos where we could send them out to colleges and schools um, and people would still get that level of engagement. People would still find out what it's like to be on a site on a day-to-day -day basis within, within these job roles. Um, so yeah, and, and like I say, when when we're uh, when we're coming out of COVID, it's something that we will continue to develop, something we will um, build upon. We'll try and get as many. But the end goal is that we try and have a day for every single um, trade, um, and that we can kind of offer it out to schools and colleges, and they can pick and choose depending on what their um, what their what their interests are. Um, and yeah, we will we'll continue to use it. It can be a, a sort of 
virtual session to see if you're actually interested in what you think you are in the construction industry. And if not, you know, go and try the different days. You know, try each day until you, you find something you are interested in. And once you are interested in it, we can give you a practical placement based upon that. Um, and I'm, I'm obviously cautious of the amount of time we've got. So without uh, going on for too long, I'm going to pass you over to Graham Williamson. Graham Williamson. Thanks. Um, so the, when the opportunity arose to get involved in the Foundation Apprenticeships within construction and with the added opportunity to collaborate with such a high profile company like um, Morrison's, it was an obvious choice for all the staff concerned. Um, and this meant the recruitment process for the student input was going to be an important one. The pupils in the schools had seen successes of the previous year's pilot. Uh, and, and how that sort of went on. And, and this created a lot of interest in the programme. So it was difficult for staff to let down some students who didn't make it onto the cohorts. Uh, as mentioned, the places were highly sought after. Uh, we had to whittle down applicants to fit the following cohort sizes. So we had three groups at Fort Valley Stirling Campus. Uh, we had two groups at Fort Valley College Falkirk Campus. One group at Fort Valley Alloa Campus and also, we go out to the schools as well. So we have two groups at St. Modens High School at Stirling and one group at Stirling High School. So in total, nine cohorts, roughly of around 10 people per cohort. So as you can imagine, this was quite a task to programme, timetable and enrol, some of which we had to do online for the first time. Um, and I think the online enrolment process was probably one of the more memorable points in that journey. So whilst making arrangements for the course delivery plan and the schedules, the main difficulties that we, we sort of came across were the triangular approach that we had to, to overcome with many, many Microsoft Teams calls between school staff, college staff and Connor over at Morrison's. Uh, luckily though, the key people involved, we really pulled together, pulled in the same direction and we were able to produce the programme um, and what it has become today. Uh, Connor was fantastic at Morrison's. He was able to offer a tailor-made range of resources and more importantly, personnel uh, in order to make the programme exciting for young people, make it engaging, um, but probably more importantly, making it current and making it future-proof. So I'm going to pass on to Lawrence Ferguson, who is our Learning and Digital, Digital Skills Manager at Fort Valley College. Thank you. Thanks, Graham. So as Graham highlights there, I think one of the biggest um, promotions out of this experience has been the collaboration and the input from all the different areas of the team here. Um, and with myself and my own role within this as the Learning and Digital Skills Manager, um, our big rollout this year for Fort Valley College has been the Learning and Digital Skills Academy. Now within that, we have uh, digital ambitions for 2021 to 2025. And specifically on that is to enhance and introduce more online delivery within our curriculum and within our commercial portfolio. So the virtual work placement um, FA experience was certainly something that was on a radar early and, and something that I had looked to collaborate with directly with uh, Connor himself at, at Morrison's Construction. So our role within that was really to look deeper into the learning materials and the delivery of those materials um, and see how we could support the enhancement in that area um, as an academy and with our expertise behind that. We met up with Connor to explore any options and areas that we could in terms of how we would go about the delivery and the enhancement of that. And it very much became apparent that, like any blended experience, that it was going to be bespoke and what fit Connor and the Morrison's approach. I um, mean, we were able to identify a suitable range for that that would open up a whole wealth of benefits for the staff and the students. So initially, we had looked at proposals around one file, um, the integration of Moodle and Articulate software packages, and then eventually came round to the conclusion that for a variety of reasons, our synchronous approach with MS Teams and OneNote for a seamless um, experience for students and, and the material there was most suitable. Um, our Microsoft option allowed the students to engage with Teams and a resource there in particular 
that would provide live feedback and live session and live delivery, but also using a platform that is now obviously for the reasons of the last 12 months, really at the forefront of this industry and throughout the sectors. So a real kind of hands-on experience there of what to expect in terms of what communication and collaboration looks like in the workplace. Um, the other, other reason for that is the learning materials that Connor had produced through PDF, et cetera, was clear that we could actually offer support in terms of enhancing the support and the interaction um, in terms of that delivery as well. So I'll pass over just as James um, goes through the OneNote experience just now and just highlight some of the areas where we've managed to enhance the interaction and, and, and just provide more in-depth um, understanding and experience for the students within uh, the learning materials. So just as you can see on screen, what had actually started out a, a PDF document, we've now actually managed to take this material and work it through OneNote to have a full online experience for the students that it saves time um, in terms of uh, students actually having to download documentation, in some cases print off and even handwrite and scan in answers um, from their own remote area of working. Um, in this way, we've got live sessions where both employers and staff can, can work in live with the students as they work uh, through their learning material. Uh, we've identified quickly with Connor, one of the first things that Connor had highlighted out was the amount of time that this would save and benefit throughout the work uh, placement experience for the week. And we've already explored the opportunities that that has opened up now with the save time to bring in more expert speakers um, and to provide a further more in-depth work placement environment as well for the students and the, the FAs coming in. Again, this all very much reflects the benefits of an online blended learning approach. And it's in that collaboration and in that communication between the Learning and Digital Skills Academy and Connor himself to identify the most appropriate approach for the learning material and for Morrison's themselves to ensure that that student engagement and the student caption can be broadened and made more in depth. And the opportunities now that we're making going forward for a more sustainable approach to that um, is really becoming apparent as the weeks go out and the more and more that we put into this, the more and more the ideas are being developed um, in terms of how we can take this forward for Morrisons and, and other groups um, as, the years, as the years will pass now. Uh, Jim, I wonder if you could just talk us through just um, some of the intricacies, if you will, of what you've helped laid out in terms of the support of the material as well. The workbook is now fully interactive. It can be integrated into a variety of the different Microsoft products, uh, but also it is a bit like an e-portfolio now as well, uh, where what we can do is we can get digital signatures for absolutely everything on it, uh, which again complies with some of the SQA and SDS things. It's a secure login. Uh, so it, it meets a lot of the criteria of the the e-portfolio. Uh, and as I say, it is now interactive that we can put it into Microsoft Office, we can put it into Teams, we can run it off OneNote. Uh, it's also very easily updated. And as we work more with Connor, uh, we can update and make this even more interactive and a better experience for both students and teachers alike. So in terms of moving forward with it, as we say, this is something that will very much be in review and collaboration um, in months to come and moving forward. We'll, we'll work with Morrison's and Connor to establish more and more development in these areas. And, it, and it's already the sections that you can see and that we, we can share uh, these um, one notes and what we've done and what we plan to do in terms of further work through Articulate software, et cetera, as well, to enhance uh, the interaction with it. 
Um, but the more and more that we work with, the more and more ideas that we're actually developing around that to enhance the experience um, of the virtual work placement and broaden out uh, the catchment of that as well, which is, has been significant for both of us. Um, there's a digital.learning at foldvalley.ac.uk there as well for anybody who does want to contact directly with any um, further questions or if they want to see more in depth in terms of what we're creating and how we're collaborating with Morrison's on that as well. Um, and at this stage, we'd be, we'd be happy to um, discuss that with anybody. And I think that's us. Yeah, it's a case of any questions, really. Um, but if that's us, we're, we're all done. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Aisha. Uh, and thanks, everyone. That was really, really clear and, and a very useful way of showing how that you can take these uh, enhancements and fully interactive forward in, in, in the, the current pandemic and in the, the, the displacement that we're all, all experiencing just now. I've already got tons of questions from my own point of view, and I'm sure others have. But if you wouldn't mind, what we would like to do is to hold those questions afterwards. So if you can hang on with us um, uh, until we hear Paul's, and then we'll go into questions for, bo for both of you, if that's OK. Um, uh, and I'm just going to introduce uh, Paul Fagan. Paul is from West College, Scotland and uh, uh, has been in the forefront of uh, a development around in engineering working with the National Manufacturing Institute of Scotland, uh, uh, which is in their area in Chinon, but also working with other colleges and employers. So it's over to Paul um, to uh, take us through his presentation um, on the development of meta skills um, uh, in, and, uh, in the critical engineer and in the skills agenda. Thanks, Peter. Um, thanks for that introduction. As Peter said, my name's Paul Fagan. I'm the Head of Enterprise and Employability at West College Scotland. And um, I've been um, leading on a, a partnership with uh, Fourth Valley College and Perth College and a, a number of other partners to develop a, a concept called the, the Critical Engineer. I want to go back very quickly to um, the sort of operating environment that we were looking at a couple of years ago when we developed this context. And a lot of you will, will recognize this. Um, globally, um, we were looking as a college to, to try and understand manufacturing 4.0. Um, and what that meant, both for the, the local and regional business community, but also, also ourselves in terms of digitization and, and that move. Um, we wanted to understand it through the lens of what the, the Scottish government was looking to put in place in terms of support through their policy, a manufacturing future for Scotland. And what really caught our attention was the proximity of the creation of the Advanced Manufacturing Innovation District and in Shannon in Renfrewshire and all the national assets that are being created around that, uh, specifically as, as Peter was talking about, the National Manufacturing Institute for Scotland, which is to all intents and purposes a, a research hub, a collaboration hub between industry and academia. And I think one of, the, one of the things we wrestled with was, was our value proposition as a college. Um, ENMIS is led by the University of Strathclyde um, and they are heavily involved in advanced manufacturing and we wanted to understand what role the college could play in supporting local businesses and specifically which learners and businesses could be helped. Now, like many of you in, uh, at this meeting in, in all of Scotland's colleges, West College, Scotland, West College Scotland support um, a range of different constituents and, and learners, including pupils in school through to uh, apprentices and the workforce engineers and, and those that support engineers, as well as small and large businesses. And then there are a range of intermediaries and stakeholders as well. And there were support mechanisms being put in place um, to enable people to, to thrive in a manufacturing 4.0 environment. But we really wanted to, to find a space where we could, we could add value. So our vision for the critical engineer was to, to unlock the collaboration and growth potential of Scotland's advancing manufacturing and engineering SMEs. 
And by that we meant working with SMEs that didn't occupy that space in terms of manufacturing 4.0 just now, were still wrestling with it themselves. In layman's terms, we're manufacturing 2.0 or 3.0 or 1990s or the turn of the century. So we wanted to understand their technical skills requirements, their access to manufacturing 4.0 equipment, and their opportunities to collaborate with national assets. So we understood it through the lens of it being technical. We wanted to build a bridge to help companies move towards manufacturing 4.0. Uh, and with that, we applied to the Advanced Manufacturing Challenge Fund. It's managed by uh, Scottish Enterprise. And we're in the process just now of procuring what we describe as manufacturing 4.0 equipment that will enable local companies to equip their workforces with those technical skills. But we also wanted to find a space where we could develop the workforce. And it was clear to us that in speaking to the National Skills Agency, Skills Development Scotland, and speaking to the University of Strathclyde, they had certain things that they were going to be able to, to develop and deliver. But one of the things that really struck us was that in, in, in all of the sort of statistics and, and conversations that we were having, the, the existing workforce were also going to be part of the future. And that gave us, that opened up a space for us to have a conversation with business where they couldn't just be relying upon um, the next generation of graduates, undergraduates and school pupils. It was important if they were going to thrive in this environment that they had to develop the skills of, of their existing workforce. So a focus for us in terms of engaging with business was to say the workforce of the future is already in your building. And what that meant was that this project was not just about developing the technical skills of the workforce, it was also cultural. It was a recognition that change is exponential and that staff would need highly developed meta skills. That those new pieces of equipment ultimately would become obsolete and then there would be another generation of equipment. So it's about the agility and the meta skills of your workforce to be able to, to work in that ever evolving environment. What we were keen to avoid was to start with the answer and work backwards in terms of speaking to business. So we engaged with um, one of our key employer partners, the Scottish Leather Group, who you may, you may well know, I think they're our, our biggest um, employer partner in terms of apprenticeships. And we worked with them and the Service Design Academy who operate out of Dundee and Angus College. And we wanted to enable a group of engineers to speak to their, their peers and other departments about what this future workforce and workplace could look like. And we sent them a, a, a series of questions. We asked them, what role will data play in their, their job role going forward? What technology will they use and what skills will they need um, to use it, and what skills and personal attributes will they need uh, within this ever-changing environment? And the results were really interesting. You know, from a, a data and a technology point of view, there were different bits and, and, and pieces that came from it, but there was a theme, there was a horizontal theme of meta skills, and that wasn't necessarily a, a language that the, the engineers themselves would recognise or associate with, but just through their understanding, they, they, those sort of themes and thoughts started to emerge. And you can see that here in terms of their findings. They talked about co-design with stakeholders. They talked about um, working together, researching together to embrace new data, sharing of analysis, um, co-design in terms of new technology and prototypes, and looking to see what other engineering companies were doing in their field. And similarly, when we asked them which personal attributes they thought would be foundational to the engineer of the future, it was really, really interesting to get their feedback. You know, you can see here that the words that they've identified, strong communication, creative problem solving, improvisation, reflective listening. These were words that we could associate immediately with, with meta skills but it was surprising to us that these were the words that were prominent in the thoughts of a, 
an existing workforce without their, their understanding of this, this emerging skills landscape. And from this, what we asked them to do was create a vision of the critical engineer, the engineer of the near future. And it was their near future that we wanted them to describe. So what they described in terms of their role within either their company or their industry was an engineer who had a, a capacity for continuous learning, thrived with technological change, embraced it. They were responsible for their own learning and practice. And they could see a centrality in terms of um, their firm's prosperity. And they also could see a connection to, to them with their peers and their colleagues in terms of their ability to motivate others. So this informed um, our conversations with other stakeholders and funders. And what it's enabled us to do is um, secure some funding from the Scottish Funding Council's College Innovation Fund. And that's helped us work with SMEs to start their, what we've described as an, an innovation journey. We've, we've sought to raise their uh, awareness and levels of engagement around manufacturing 4.0 and meta skills. We've also, as I said, secured funding through the Advanced Manufacturing Challenge Fund to deliver tomorrow's skills today in terms of technical skills. And we've also secured funding through the Vault Tech Trust, and that's enabling us to create a, an online learning space to, to develop meta skills and digital skills. This, this feels like a slide where we say a, a word from our sponsors, but it has been a truly um, collaborative approach. And from those initial engagements through working with the Service Design Academy, we've been working with Fourth Valley College and Perf College. So that when we ask those questions around what does manufacturing 4.0 and what does meta skills mean to you to our local business communities, it's within those regional operating environments. And I think our, our um, approach and our concept has, has been compelling for funders. So we've been able to, to secure funding, as I said, from the Scottish Funding Council, from Skills Development Scotland, from the Scottish Enterprise Advanced Manufacturing Challenge Fund, from UFI Voltech Trust, and also from uh, Renfrewshire Council. And then COVID happened, obviously. Um, and that's both been a challenge and probably like a, a a lot of you that are on this meeting today, uh, an opportunity. Funnily enough, it's, it's enabled the project team to develop their own meta skills, uh, specifically around resilience. And it's moved a lot of our thinking online, which has opened up a whole host of different opportunities. Uh, one of those was a, a national innovation summit that we had in January of this year, where again, we just wanted to, to build that awareness and that um, conscious thought around the development of meta skills within small to medium enterprises. So the technical skills, I think, is something that businesses have been able to identify, look at gaps that they have, and put their hands up and say, this, these are places that we want to develop. The meta skills has been a bit more, more nebulous, and that conversation is ongoing with business. But something that we found really helped around this, this space was the, the Skills 4.0 plan. And I think we're probably at the sort of two-year landmark as to when that was published by Skills Development Scotland. But it's provided a really helpful framework and enabled us to, to define and articulate what we mean by meta skills. And if you've read the plan, you'll, you'll know that there's 12 meta skills identified and defined, and then they're bundled into to three activities. So when we've spoken to, to companies and stakeholders about meta skills, that's been a really valuable reference tool. And I would, I would advise anyone that's not looked at it to, to, ha, to, to investigate that and, and have a look at it. And what we wanted to do in the back of that was take a, a deeper dive. Now, obviously, within those 12 meta skills, they're, they're not in 12 individual shoots. You know, there is a relationship between them. You'll see from the ones that are identified there that if you were to develop a project or or um, develop a, a job role that you would be, you, you would utilize more than one meta skill. But we also wanted to understand them in a deep way. So we picked one and we picked the one in the far right corner, critical thinking. 
And to summarise, critical thinking is the ability to analyse and evaluate and draw conclusions from data to enable you to solve um, what might seem uh, complex or, or insurmountable challenges. So we put together a project, a course, if you like, um, that we could share with businesses. And we introduced the, the idea and the methodology of critical thinking and how, it can, uh, how employees can apply it in the workplace. We wanted them to understand how they could start to use data to identify trends or patterns. We wanted to give them the facility and the ability to cu curate that data, to look at multiple perspectives and start to build solutions that are based on evidence. We wanted to develop their skills to self-reflect on their own biases and assumptions. And we wanted them to then use that consensus build to develop shared solutions within their business. And then we wanted to, them to apply it practically. So we've been working with three employers, uh, Strathclyde Passenger Transport, Chemring Energetics, and also the, the previously um, referenced uh, Scottish Leather Group. And we'd asked them to identify what we'd said could be orphan projects. You know, those projects that for whatever reason have been stuck in amber, for a number of months or perhaps even years and apply the critical thinking methodology to see if they could they could look at solutions and uh, some of the results have been quite remarkable uh, i'm conscious of time so i just wanted to touch on our, our next steps for critical thinking and um, obviously we want to roll it out to small and medium enterprises and we've got some funding from skills development scotland to do that we want to take a deeper dive um, around the meta skills and develop some other uh, courses. And I think we would want to do that in the other two bundles of um, social intelligence and self management. Obviously, meta skills are foundational, they're applicable to, to all sectors and, and all of those constituencies that I highlighted earlier. So, one of the opportunities we've had is working with EMIS, as Peter was saying, and they'd asked us to support um, people that had been made redundancy through this, this COVID period. And what we're doing is we're going to build um, their CVs and rather than build it through the, the sort of experience of what their job roles have been, we're going to build them through the, the lens of meta skills. And that's going to be a dynamic interactive CV. So we're, we're quite in, um, excited about that project. We're going to launch our critical engineer playbook, which will be the software that um, provides a, a host for our courses. And we've also this week been told that we're one of the um, four strategic projects that um, will be able to promote STEM, both to, to pupils and um, female apprentices. And again, we want to take our critical engineer concept and, and roll it out through, through that approach. We've not got a fully fledged answer to this, as, as you can imagine, there's some things that we want to, to sort of poke about and prod further. Um, we've built in reflective practice to our courses, but I think what we've not done yet at this sort of um, embryonic stage is looked at any patterns or trends across those courses and with those learners. In terms of industry value and recognition, I think we've really raised the awareness of meta skills and helped companies understand what we mean by that and what that could mean for their, their businesses. But where we can demonstrate individual and personal growth, I think the more long-term opportunity and potential is to demonstrate what that impact would mean for um, businesses in terms of their growth. And that follows into alignment. Ultimately, what we want to do, as I'd said at the start of the presentation, is take small businesses that are perhaps occupying that manufacturing 2.0 space and give them the opportunity to collaborate within that EMIS environment. So alignment with what EMIS is doing in other national assets is absolutely critical. And lastly, new sectors. Meta skills, as I said, are foundational to any, any business, any industry, in any sector, and that includes colleges. So what we're doing here can be applicable to any other sector. I'm conscious of time. I think I'm running over by about 60 seconds. So I won't touch on these um, links, but obviously they're there and we can um, review them in terms of the recorded input. Thank you. Thank you.
fault. Um, and uh, I want to just say to our viewers, thank you for joining us this morning. Um, and um, we hope that you've uh, been able to get an idea of the aware build the awareness of uh, 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 the developments that the two examples have have shown us this morning and how difficult it is actually uh, to be able to capture what, as Paul mentioned, could be nebulous concepts in such a way that you've physically been able to, 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 to measure things. We are about to have a question and answer session, um, which you're more than welcome to stay and join us with. Uh, but for the moment, this is where we say goodbye to viewers on the live recording. So thank you for joining us.